to Elliot. Oh, the oh! The shot. Bedoya with a goal. One nothing Union. Good evening and welcome to Union Insider. Your weekly deep dive into the Philadelphia Union alongside the club's all tag leading scorer, Sebastian Latou, and former Union defender Shannon Williams. I'm Dave Leno. Guys, a busy stretch up coming for the Union. Six in league play, but many more games, of course, including CCL and Open Cup. Is this the start of a turnaround in league action for the team now as we hit the summer months? Yes, I think it could be, especially with the fact that uh, all of the games are away starting in you know, the months of May. So it's going to be very important to, to get this first win you know, away in the months. And then when they come back at home to kind of get in the same type of uh, play to get another point after you know, winning the last game at home. So it's going to be important to see too how Jim Curtin manage the roster with all those games and make sure you know, everybody is healthy and keep you know, playing very well during the months of May. A big stretch for the Union, I think it's one there can really advance themselves in the standings and really get back on track. It can also go the other way where you lose a couple games and all of a sudden you're down at the bottom. So it's going to be important that they approach these games with the right mentality and really look to get as many points as they can, especially on the road here. We'll be discussing the Union's Champions League results in next week's show. For now, it's full steam ahead for the club as the Red Bull game is the next one in league play. And guys, it's been a rough and tumble start in league action for the Red Bulls. In fact, they are winless in the last six in MLS play. How do they turn things around? And do you sense there's more pressure on Gerhard Struber's team different from the Union so far? Oh, of course, yeah, I think he definitely need to turn this thing around for the Red Bulls and right now it's not really uh, looking very good. A lot of you know, critics you know, towards him and you know, the fact that he doesn't get any good results. The team just got one clean sheet in the 10 games right now so far. So a lot of difficulty you know, to have a good defense for him. So hopefully the Union can uh, take advantage of that. But we always know like the game against New York, it's always a scrappy one, always like a fight and it's a derby. So it's going to be interesting to see what mentality the Red Bull go into this game. Definitely a group looking for answers, one that is looking for goal scorers, also one that's looking to prevent goals, and they haven't been good at either. So they're really looking for these answers in the, in the course of this beginning of the season. They've had some turmoil with some guys in and out of, of their locker room, so it's really important to get things back on track. Even with just one win, we talked about how quickly things can change. They can be in front of the union fighting for a playoff spot just with a one, two wins here. So. Definitely a team that you don't want to panic too early, but, but they definitely need to get things going. So speaking of the turmoil, they're 1-3-6. and six. I mentioned winless in the last six, 0-2-4. Oh, and four. In fact, they've had five 1-1 one, one draws this year. Uh, you mentioned you know, some guys that have been in and out. They've been without Lewis Morgan since March. Also, uh, Lequinas hasn't been in true form. But I want to center on Dante Van Zare, one of their key acquisitions. Uh, had a racial slur in the San Jose game, suspended, not with the team, suspended for six games this year a big miss for them and rightfully so he should be out away from the club but how does the Red Bull regroup without a, a high team player like him up top it's very difficult I mean I, I never really uh, you know leave something like that in a club in every team I play so you know it kind of like shake a little bit of group especially after a, a preseason and this guy you know just coming to the team and doing this it's kind of like question a lot about you know what's happening in, uh, in this team in this club and I think everybody in a, in the group kind of don't really know what to do at that moment so I feel it's a kind of a, a question Question mark still right now to, to know what mentality they have in this team and who wants to play together, you know, between of uh, what happened, you know, with the coach, with the players who, you know, now, like you say, is suspended for six games. So it's going to be taking time for them to get back, especially having a lot of new players in this team. How much pressure is it, Shannon, on, the, on these other guys around him who have been there and, and they lost Aaron Long, they still have the goalkeeper, former Union goalkeeper in Coronel, but, but others and some of the younger guys like Omir Fernandez, Casas, who have taken a little bit more of a leadership role to step up in the absence of a few of the players we just mentioned. It's important that other players step up. You're missing a player that you were really expecting to have a big contribution this season in, in Van Zier, somebody that they, they went out and, and identified and, and paid a lot of money for and are, are really looking for him to, to, to be the, the catalyst of their attack this year. So when he leaves and he's gone, it's really important that the other guys step up and try to fill that role. It's also a good opportunity for some of these other guys to, to really start their, their season off in the right way and to compete for minutes once he gets back even. Speaking of competing for minutes, uh, a guy that we know very well, Corey Burke, former Union player, left for the Red Bull signing with 
Red Bull's in free agency. So this year he, he actually scored in the 89th minute last game off of a corner by Tolkien in a 1-1 draw at Chicago. Six starts, nine games played. Uh, what do you make of the move for Corey Burke and how he's utilized under the Red Bull system? I mean, we all know that he was a, as a super sub, you know, for the union last year. He, he got so many uh, great games, you know, coming in, scoring, you know, and really helping the team to, to score the goal. So having him moving to the New York Red Bull, I think it was a good move for him to get more minutes. But, you know, coming in a new team, it's always a bit uh, difficult for a forward to kind of know which way they play. He doesn't have the same, you know, player behind him to give him the ball and the confidence was maybe a bit low. So now he just scored his first goal last weekend. Hopefully he doesn't start to score more goals and we don't want to see him to score against his old team. But it's just a, a time of adaptation for him. Hopefully it's a different type of player, you know, more physical, glassness and Elliot know him very well. They practice with him every day. So they will know exactly what to do against him if he starts on Saturday. Time now for our first team report presented by Green Mountain Energy. The team was quickly back to work on the trading fields in Chester following Tuesday night's Champions League result. And if you thought the team's itinerary was getting any lighter, it isn't with a U.S. Open Cup match at Minnesota United added on recently. Here's Jim Curtin and the squad on dealing with such a heavy schedule. Yeah, look, uh, obviously Red Bull's uh, a big rivalry game. Um, you know, again, a team that you know tends to bring out the best in us, um, you know, a team that when we get together, it's a real high-intensity game. Uh, two good defensive teams, two good attacking teams. So uh, the team that finishes off their transitions will be the one that comes out on top. Uh, but I expect a, a really hard match. Uh, they'll be very organized. Um, both teams are in need of points right now, so uh, it'll be highly competitive. And, uh, yeah, we look forward to a tough test up at Red Bull. Yeah, we know it's going to be a tough game. They're they're a good opponent, and it's a good rivalry between us. So I think we just need to play with confidence, like we did against Toronto, and we'll get three points. Yeah, just go out, uh, match their intensity from the first whistle, and then um, you know let our football do the talking and. Yeah, keep it tight. Let's get back to this weekend. Guys, the Union and MLS player coming off the 4-2 win over Toronto. You know, it's been a little bit of time since there's been league action, but how do they continue the play from the Toronto game and applying that now on the road at Red Bull Arena? Uh, they just need for me need to really copy what they did in the first half. I think the first half they played against Toronto was uh, was almost perfect, you know, scoring all those goals, winning the ball in the midfield, bringing some energy and just really reacting as soon as they lose the ball to win it back right away and just playing simple and quick. And I think it was a bit missing, especially in the offense for the Union, but they did a very good job against Toronto. So if they can apply just this a little bit in New York, we all know it's going to be a different type of atmosphere, but just kind of like being in control in the midfield, winning the ball, I think is very important. Almost a really uh, copy and paste scenario where they need to do a lot of the same things that they did against Toronto. Very similar opponent in a lot of ways and not only where they are in the standings, but, but how they set up and what they're looking to do. So if they can bring a lot of the things that they brought against Toronto, I think they'll be successful against the Red Bull. It will certainly, guys, be action-packed. Five games across all competitions in a 15-day span. As for the Union's opponent in the Red Bulls, they have seven different goal scores, but nobody has two or more goals on that team. Where are the goals going to come from? <laughs> Who knows? It's very strange right now. I feel like a lot of people can score. You don't know. They have a kind of a, a team who uh, have players who sometimes, you know, make a, you know, a play here and there. But uh, I will say maybe Manuel, who is kind of like a player, like the forward, who, who they can use their speed in counter-attack, who can really go behind the defense. Or we can see them really scoring some goals this year in set pieces. So defending set pieces for the Union can be something the key to not allow New York to score. For me, it's definitely, we talked about Van Zier being gone, so who's going to be stepping up? Is it going to be Laquinas? Is it going to be Barlow? The, the Red Bulls are definitely looking for answers, looking for that goal scorer that, even when Van Zier gets back, is going to be that second complement striker, somebody that can really help them continue to add the goals. Yeah, Barlow has done very well for the Red Bulls against the Union. I remember he's playing days with Wisconsin from 2014 to 17. He's been a, been a good player in that system. But when you take a look at the pressing styles and how they contrast with one another, it seems to me that the Union are much more organized with their press, meaning the communication on when to go forward on each side of the field different from the Red Bulls this year. Is that fair to say? 
Yes, and I think the, the missing piece with uh, Morgan, I think it's very important for them because he was kind of the guy who, in counter-attack, was, was deadly. They use his speed, they use his vision to find the pass and follow, and they were very good countering last year and scoring a lot of goals. So the way they defend with sometimes three in the back, sometimes four, it's going to be interesting to see what they decide to do against the Union. And who is going to, for me to win the battle in midfield will be important because it's where we'll decide you know, which way the game is going to go. The Nealis brothers are really big uh, defensively uh, for Gerhard Struber's team in front of uh, Carlos Cornell. Uh, but, but what do you make of the union trying to exploit whether they play Shane in three or four in the back? I know Reyes has had some hot and cold moments uh, for this Red Bull team as well. I think it's just important for the union to worry about their own game plan. I think that when you look at Red Bulls and them looking to change their formation and their shape, that leads to a lot of the, disc, dis, the dysfunction and discommunication when they're looking to press. So I think the union can definitely look to exploit that, little bits of mi miscommunication, especially on that, that left flank of, of the Red Bull. I think they can definitely do a good job of once they win the ball, just making sure that they, they look for that front three. We're about to step away, but before we do, it's time for This Week in Union History presented by Premier Orthopedics. We don't have to look too far back for this one. May 22nd of last year, the Union traveled to Nashville to play their first ever match at Geodis Park, a 1-1 draw that saw striker Michael Ua notch his first goal for the boys in blue. We're back with Throwback Thursday presented by United Concordia. It's one of the most important goals in Union history. Jacob Glezes with another patented bomb from beyond, beating Carlos Cornell in the first round of the MLS Cup playoffs. The very foundations of Subaru Park shaking to their core. A famous goal, a famous win, a famous night. Welcome back with Sebastian Latou and Shane and Williams. I'm Dave Leno. It's now time to hand it over to these two guys for their keys to the game presented by Subaru. Seba, what do you got? I'm going to win the second ball in the midfield. Uh, we all know, you know the game against the Red Bulls are always you know, very scrappy. Lots of energy from the beginning, probably from the Red Bulls. The fans are involved a little bit. So it's a game that uh, always kind of is winning in the midfield. And it's not the first ball is going to be very important, it's the second ball. We saw against Toronto, if the team really wins the second ball, they now can take control of the game, knock the ball around and find a way to, you know, find the forward and stay in the half of the New York Red Bulls to score the goal. So it's going to be very important to win the second ball and kind of get the physicality out of the game in the midfield of the Red Bulls, who for me is a bit less physical than the Union. Yeah, I agree. And I think if they can find and exploit that space where Edelman and Caceres are and sitting, I think that the Union could be very well out of the midfield at Red Bull Arena. Shane, and what's your key? My key to the game is going to be for the Union to play quickly off of the transition moments. How quickly can they look to play into that front three and look to combine off of that and, and get dangerous chances in front of goal? One player who seems to have found the keys to locking down a starting spot in the starting 11 is Jack McGlynn. Both of his starts in MLS have come in the last month, and he's featured multiple times, including against LAFC in the Champions League. Guys, as you know, Jack's, Jack McGlynn's body has certainly matured over time. Getting a lot of the starts uh, over Leon Flock. I know Flock's been nursing that pelvic injury, has seen time recently. But, but what do you make of McGlynn's rise for the Union? Where do you see him going towards the summer months into the end of the year? I think he's going to keep going, you know, progressing more, you know, having playing time for the team, feeling, you know, the, the rhythm of this league. And, uh, you know, we saw, I think, from last year to this year, already, like, in his physical ability, it's uh, a bit stronger as a player. You can see his body, like, grow a little bit. And then his confidence, like, start to grow as well. As soon as he's on the ball, he's not, you know, too scared to keep the ball a bit longer to then find the right pass for the forward. But for me, it's his vision. You can see, like, he always see exactly why the right pass at the right time. He can find, like, a long pass of 40 yards in to the forward, we can just play, you know, the simple pass, you know, right next to him. So it's uh, it's going to see to his mentality, how he attacks the band. But the fact is, he just need to sometime maybe not always try to see the assist because you always want to see, but maybe take a bit more risk, you know, personally to dribble the ball and not always just passing the ball. Shannon, what's the mindset of a union defender? Because when you dissect the buildup of the union, oftentimes I saw this a lot in leg one LAFC at the union was whether it was Glezis or Elliott or even on the right side, Olivier Baizo finding McGlynn. He was the first look. Is that oftentimes that you want to get the ball to McGlynn? Or is he the first look, what you have seen from the Union this year when McGlynn has started or come into games late? I think it's definitely something that the Union have tried to do. And when they turn teams over, finding McGlynn, he's usually one of the midfielders that drops deeper to get on the ball because of his range of passing. So it's a great outlet for defenders just to, to know somebody that wants the ball and that somebody is going to take care of the ball and make a good decision with it. 
McGlynn is starting to make better and better decisions. The more games he plays, the more time and minutes that he gets, you see the confidence that's coming through and it's starting to show in, in end product, not only in goals, hopefully that'll come as, as we move into the season, but also with the assists. You mentioned the transition moments as one of your keys a, a moment ago, and I want to mention the, the strikers' mentality for the union when McGlynn is in possession. So what are the runs, Seba, got to be like for, for Owen Carranza when McGlynn is on the ball often on that left-hand side or drifting centrally? I mean, personally, I think it's great for Rua because as soon as you see McGlynn facing the game, it's, he knows that the ball can come, you know, behind the defense because, like, say, Shannon, he has a range of the pass. He can find a great pass, you know, behind the two center backs, which is great for Rua. But having him, too, playing in the middle of the field, you can see coming inside, and I think he a lot of more possibility for Wagner to overlap, which we didn't see that much, you know, from the beginning of the season. But I think we are going to see Kai Wagner, you know, coming much more, you know, forward on the left side and giving some good crosses because Jack McLean is going to play more inside to try to help, you know, with the passing and gas in the midfield. Michael Ua exploded with a hat trick against Toronto and leads the team in goals. We'll feature the dazzling Dane in this week's player profile when Union Insider returns. We're back with our Nugget of the Week, presented by Chick-fil-A. Jacob Glezis' game-winning goal against the Red Bulls in the 2021 postseason came at the end of extra time, the 123rd minute, making it the latest goal to be scored in MLS history. Welcome back to Union Insider. I'm Dave Leno. It's time for this week's player profile presented by Subaru. Michael Ua became the union's club record signing when he joined the squad in January of last year. It took him a little while to get going, but once he did, you know, Union fans love that. He started firing and a combination of goals and assists with Julian Carranza and Daniel Gazdag. And guys, you well know that it has been hot and cold this year. I think that's safe to say, right? He scores the brace in Montreal, has the hat trick against Toronto, but Coming from that hat trick from the Toronto game leading up to this Red Bull game, will we start to see more consistency from Ua? It's interesting to to know about him. It's all about confidence for uh, for Ua. I feel like it's uh, sometimes you know you, you see him you know being on fire and having so many opportunities. But the most important thing for for the team and for him and I think for Carranza and Gazdax, it's always one of them has to be involved and in scoring the goals. The team needs to score the goals. And so luckily for the Union, they have three guys who can do that. Not just one. Some teams are just like one big guy, but we have three. So if you see Carranza, Ua, or Gazdax on the score sheet, it's a good sign. After, of course, for uh, the confidence of each player, you want to score every game as a, as a forward. But I think he, he could be happy about what he did. We can see, you know, his sparks and how he can, you know, really impact, you know, a game. So it just, you know, depends about how they play. And sometimes, you know, one can be more in the right position at the right time. And it's how I think it is right now for the union. For me, it, I think it's somebody that is going to grow into that consistent role of being that striker. I also think that it has a lot to do with the opponents. When teams sit deep, it doesn't allow him those runs in behind, and, and we know that he likes to get in behind the defense. I think that that has a huge role to play in, in the games that he's scored in and the games that he hasn't. So he does need to find a way to impact the game, not only with goals, but also with assists and his work rate. But I think you'll start to see more consistent play from him as he starts to figure out which teams are doing what and which teams are going to be stack in the back and which teams are going to let him kind of float around and find some good spaces. We're stepping aside, but up next, I'll hold Seba and Shannon's feet to the fire and have them hand over their players to watch for this weekend's trip up the turnpike to Red Bull Arena. We're back in a few. MLS Season Pass on Apple TV is your one-stop destination for every Union League match this season. You get all 34 MLS matches plus League's Cup, behind-the-scenes features, extensive interviews, and more. If you've been missing out, now's the time to change that. Sign up for MLS Season Pass today to ensure you don't miss a minute of the action. Final segment here on Union Insider, and it's now time for our All-State players to watch. Both Seb and Shannon have selected a player who will make a significant impact on Saturday's match. Seb, who do you got? I'm going with the uh, captain, Alejandro Bedoya. Um, not sure if he's going to start this game with all the game, you know, happening during, uh, you know, the next month. But I think it's going to be very important to get his leadership into this game, you know, making sure that in the midfield, depending on how New York, you know, play with maybe four in the midfield or three as well, like the Union, to kind of like communicate well with everybody who plays to know where to go, where to be, to then, you know, press well together. And then when he receives the ball, I think he could do a bit better job, you know, to find the right pass. We saw him in 
know, trying always to, to find on the floor, you know, the Carranza, the Gazdag. But I would like to see him a little bit, you know, better going forward and maybe having Baizo, you know, coming behind him like we saw a lot, you know, during the season last year to, you know, help each other and seeing, you know, maybe be in a box and scoring some goal as well. So I'm expecting him to, you know, be kind of one of the big leaders, like he's always here for the team, but in this type of atmosphere, we're going to need him as well. And often the captain flies under the radar, so I like the Bedoya pick. Who are you rolling with? I'm rolling with Michael Ura. Uh, we spoke about him before, I think, with the Red Bulls high press that he's really going to have a lot of time and space to get him behind. If the Union can do a good job of finding him, we could be looking at a multi-goal game, hopefully, for, for Ura. And I think if Ura scores, you're going to see the Union get back-to-back -back wins for the first time. Hard to believe in MLS action. Well, that will do it for us tonight. The Union on the road at Red Bull Arena to take on the rival New York Red Bulls. You can watch that match on MLS Season Pass. We'll be back this time next week to break it all down for you. I'll be on the radio call at Red Bull Arena with Jonathan Yardley. Of course, you can listen to us on 97.5. The Fanatics starting at 7.30. For Sebastian Latou and Shane and Williams, I'm Dave Leno, thank you so much for watching and see you next time.